very not proud of you this horrible capsule this morning. Makes conversation difficult, doesn't it? That's right. So we can concentrate all our energies on the job to come. Ah, so there is a job to come. Uh, come. There'll be a meeting in ten minutes to decide how much we can tell Harry. I'd like everybody to be present. Except, of course, Harry. We may tell you what we've decided, Harry. Depends what we decide to tell you. Spins a good yarn, friend Lenin. Meeting over? Yeah. Paul, old sausage. Sorry, I, um, last time we met, lost my rag a bit. Very few fathers absolutely thrilled to find they'd bred a hairdresser. Not any old hairdresser, that. A Marxist hairdresser. Goodness knows how many leftist activists have slipped through police nets because I've transformed their appearance. I'm the Vidal Sassoon of the revolutionary left. Can you be proud of that? Absolutely. Thrilling stuff. Tremendous. Dad, are you really a Marxist? Sent you around to pump me, have they? No, but I wondered if you'd come around to pump us. I mean, you never seemed like a Marxist. Disguise, Paul. Useful customer, Johnny Camouflage. How can a Marxist spend over 20 years in the British Army? Never heard of the enemy within, Paul. Here he is. Me. You ever heard of Kim Philby? Burgess and McLean? The other fella? I'm the fifth man. Mm. Really revolting. Up yours, fat cats everywhere. What? Deliberately disgusting nosh. Well down there, anarchist of the saucepan. That was my speciality. That scouse. Liverpool stew. I'm sorry. Sorry, Nelly. Oh, excuse me. I haven't been sleeping well. Certain young lady talks in her sleep. Jill, I thought you'd stop that. I can't help it, right? I'm asleep when I'm asleep, right? Oh, don't make too much of it. I'll get used to it. I'm considered a security risk. I once blurted out our secret plans in my hotel bedroom. How do you know if you were asleep? I wasn't alone. Well, now you are, aren't you? So everything's all right. And even if you weren't alone, you'd be with one of us, so it wouldn't matter. Still a bit worrying. But we're on the verge of our biggest ever operation. Paul! Oh, we're on the verge of our biggest ever operation, are we? Um, not being inquisitive. I was just wondering uh, what I'd be expected to do and why and how and when. That's all. The less you know, the safer for you. That girl in next room. Realize now why you didn't shut her up. She may reveal plans for their big operation. My only chance, the thing is, I can't quite hear her. Could you get her to speak up a bit? Grateful fan for life, if you would. Thanks. Amen. Carry on. Bad morning. Injustice still rampant. Rich still rich, poor still poor. Jill still beautiful, Lenny still ugly. So I said bad morning instead of good morning. You're late. You need to be fit for the big op on your bike. Care to tell me why it's so important I should be fit for the big op? No. Good thinking, appreciate it. I have discouraging news. That sounds discouraging, Mum. Shut up, Throttle. I've drawn a blank. Harry has once again failed to turn up at the arranged rendezvous. That is bad news, Mum, and I beg you, don't let yourself get depressed. Shut up, Throttle. Should you keep telling my Lionel to shut up if we're all equal members of the Inner Council? Equal, Doris? We aren't Marxists. We're fighting them. 
Equally, military matters, perhaps, but in social matters, your Lionel is not and never will be my equal. Quite right, Mom. And you were right to shut me up. And I have shut up and always will shut up. Shut up, Throttle! Getting nowhere, God. I'm gonna have to try and, um, well, sleep with Jill. To find out what she's saying and thus save nation. Thought I'd better make that clear, otherwise motives might be misunderstood. For she is quite attractive. Well, very attractive. Let's face it, she's an absolute belter. Um, has there ever been anything between you and the Cobra, Jill? Oh, good Lord, no. He isn't interested in anything except the revolution. Oh. But I suppose being born into a sickeningly privileged position in one of the best families in Warwickshire... Hoot, hoot. <laughs> and Lenny being the noble savage type, I thought maybe he's... My bit of rough trade? Oh, good Lord, no. Appalling phrase. Utterly tasteless. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. There's never been anything between me and Lenny. Ah. Good-looking boy. My boy, say it myself as shouldn't. I'm not exactly his type. Uh -huh. I prefer older men, Harry, with sad, lived-in faces. You've got more street cred than the rest of them put together. Thanks. Jill, the day I arrived, I couldn't help noticing... That I kissed you? Yes, slap on the kiss, I couldn't help noticing. Jill, I know you hate being so undeservedly beautiful. But I don't. For God's sake, Harry, of course I'll sleep with you. Come to my room tonight. Fact is, if I'm in her bed, I'm going to have to... Um... I mean, it wouldn't be convincing Cove leaping into a woman's bed and just uh, lying there, listening. So, um, for what I'm about to receive, please make me truly thankful. I stayed till it was dark. There's no sign of him. Maybe as members of the inner council of Major Truscott's army, offer our special sympathy to you who are so sadly parted from the one you love and uh, who you must be wondering if you'll ever see him again. Thank you, Throttle, for those few tactless and ungrammatical words. Now, do you have any idea of what we can do? Let's storm the filthy lefty sods. My right, Doris is right. Let us scale walls, thirst in, rescue the Major, and beat his foul captors into the bargain. Do you know what you are, you pillocks? Thick as four short planks, two each. They're not his captors. He chose to go there. We can't rescue him until we found out if he's found out what he went there to find out. We could send somebody else in, re infiltrate. Now you're talking love of my life. Well done, Doris. If Harry isn't back in a few days, we'll send in either you or me, Throttle, because we've been indoctrinated into Marxism with Harry. Oh, I would like to volunteer for this dangerous role with relish, except... Except, Throttle? Yes, Mom. Except what, Throttle? The Major is alone and desperate, Mom. Now who will bring in more comfort, you or me? No contest. Be plug all. Poor Harry. He must be having the most dreadful time. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was wonderful. You're wonderful. again. You're wonderful, Bert. Bert? Mm. 
Can I come in, Dad? Huh? Oh, hello, Paul. I was resting. I'm absolutely knackered. Pretty tired today for some reason. Mm. Could it be because you're sleeping with Jill? <laughs> Can't deny it, I'm afraid, old plum pudding. And are you sleeping with her to find out what our plans are? <laughs> Living in Italy has affected you. Your mind is Machiavellian. You've heard of Machiavelli? Aren't they those fluted tubes of pasta filled with spinach and cheese? Ignoramus. Machiavelli was a politician. It was so Machiavellian they named a word after him. Machiavellian. It means Machiavellian. Machiavellian. You knew all yes. the time. I'm going to have to tell the Cobra. He probably knows who Machiavelli was. Why you're sleeping with Jill? I'm sleeping with her because I find her very attractive, both physically and politically. When will I convince you I always only pretended to be right wing? Yeah. Sometimes worried I might be overdoing it. Actually, Captain Beamish said something like that in Amsterdam. He said you were too right wing to be true. Amsterdam? Yeah, when you got him to take us to Amsterdam when you were away on a conference. So that Mum wouldn't be lonely. Oh, that time. Yes, I've forgotten that. Good old Beamish, always ready to step in. Paul, if I'm treading on your toes vis-a-vis -vis Jill, Oh, no, no. She's not exactly my type. It's funny, she said that, too. What exactly is your type? I like them uh, hairier. <laughs> hairier? I can't seem to get into Lenin today. I think I'll switch to Dick Francis. Skaldagri and greed on the race course. Exploitation of jockeys and animals. Powerful Marxist stuff. The Danube has many mouths. But Worcester has only one source. I'm just go and see if our hairdresser is ready for you. Hello. I'm... Uh, Please, no names. Remember the rules. Absolutely. Getting disguised ready for some important job somewhere. Are you? Yes. He's ready for you. Upstairs and straight ahead. Thank you. Nice to meet you, whoever you are. And good luck with the sea creeps as soon as the revolutionary left. Fascinating stuff. Yes. I'll be about half an hour. Shopping here. I'll do it. I mean, very striking girl, stocking up on a regular basis might lead people to you. Me, totally unknown in the area, pass completely unnoticed. Might be safer. That's a good thought. Okay, you do the shopping. Gosh, thanks. That's terrific. Is that wise? Yes, because you are going to follow him and find out if he contacts anybody. Right. You're a genius. Mm. I sometimes long to be out there where the action is. They also serve who only stand and cut and wash and spray and shampoo. Hello, sir. I'm being followed. Twenty pounds? How dare you? I'm neither bent nor rich. I'm sorry, madam, I don't think I've had the pleasure. It's me, Beamish Harry. 
I'm disguised. Good God. Where are you going? I'm trying to find your camp, Harry. It's all been a ghastly mistake. Walking out on you like that, I've regretted it. I, I can't do it on my own. Please take me back, Harry. Never in a million years. Please, Harry. Remember my wife, Beamish? Of course you do. Practically lived in the house. Remember Amsterdam? What other capitals did you take her to? Copenhagen? Paris? Did your love sprout in Brussels? I thought you didn't get on with Betty. I don't now. Did then, till you... Where's your charity? Only dressed as a nun, Beamish. Don't have to behave like one. Charity begins at home, and know what began in my home, and it wasn't charity. So shove off, you swine, you rat, you human reptile, you viper in the Truscan nest. You make me sound like a one-man suit. Exactly what you are. Excellent description. So get out of my life, you randy bastard! <laughs> Well, good riddance. Do you hear? Good riddance. You dressed up like that. It's a sick joke. I, I'm terribly sorry, madam. I, I do apologize. I uh, mistook you for an old army chum of mine. Boy, where the hell do you think you're going? To my hut to change out of this clobber boat. Oh, it's you, sir. I saw her shout at you, sir. Thought you was a nun. Is that how you normally address nuns? Don't get a lot of nuns down, Millwall. You are supposed to address potential new recruits in a tactful manner. Now get my inner council assembled in the briefing hut. Yes, sir. Do I detect a sullen note, boat? Well, sir, it ain't very nice being the only one in your army what isn't in your inner council, sir. Behave well. One day, maybe you will. But not if you go around saying, Oi, where the hell do you think you're going to nuns, you pillock? Be seated. I'm so pleased to see you, Harry. Me too. See you, I mean. Kiss you if this wasn't an official meeting. I, I think I can speak for my Doris, sir, when I say that uh, we wouldn't be jealous or give vent to unseemly cries such as, Fwah! <laughs> Thank you, Throttle. Stop! <laughs> no, no, stop it. Uh, well done, sir. Now, to business. Um, had a rather severe personal blow when I met the Marxist. The female Marxist wasn't there. Nancy. Well, it wasn't exactly a passionate kiss. In front of the throttles. No, I think I can speak for my Doris when I say that... Uh... Oh, shut up, that sex maniac. Yes, sir. One of the Marxists is my son. Harry, that is a blow, sir. That is a blow, sir. Quite. I am sorry, Harry. Anyway, what did you find out? Well... They are a Marxist cell, and I have infiltrated them. One of them is the Cobra. Another is my son. The other two aren't. They're plotting something important. A fifth blighter came today and had a haircut. He's plotting something else. What are they plotting, Harry? Well, give me a chance. Tricky customer, Johnny Marxist. Missed you terribly, Nancy. In your absence, taken to unusual habits. What habits? These nuns' habits. Joke. <laughs> How can you joke at a time like this? Of course it's a time like this. Joke one feeble feelings for the hiding of. Mm. Missed you so much, Nancy. I miss you too. <laughs> Is it really awful back there? Pretty awful. Cooped up, tiny bedroom, no sheets, revolting food, indoctrination sessions, constant vigilance, hardly sleeping at all. Oh, you poor darling. Oh, Harry, I'm so sorry I got upset about that girl. I know you'd never touch her. True. 
Thanks. Jerry, she's understandable, though. She is attractive. Well, not as attractive as you, but not totally hideous. She is there, then? No. No, I, I, I meant in her picture. She looks attractive. No. No sign of her. No. Totally monastic life. <laughs> Big job, son. What? <sighs> sniff, sniff, yum, yum. Glad it's your turn to cook. What is it? Tandoori chicken. Mm. Probably Jehovah's Witnesses. Great doorbell bashers. Tandoori chicken. Well done, the Marxist Maddow Jaffrey. Cheers. Mm. 